They're not aware that it's been classified as a class 2B possible carcinogen in 2011, that was almost a decade ago, and that new science since then um, has shown that this radiation can cause cancer. The, the NTP study I talked about, the Ramazzini Institute in Italy uh, did, did a study with animals using very, very low levels, much lower than NIH, and found the same tumors. There was a study, the same types of tumors as NIH did. Jacobs University did a study looking at animals, giving them a known carcinogen that they knew would cause cancer, and then having a group that had the known carcinogen plus radiofrequency radiation, but at a very low level. And they found that the group that had both exposures had a much higher uh, tumors. And as they state, there's a tumor promotion effect, a synergistic effect between the radio frequency and something that we know causes cancer. And, that, and there's also the Ramazzini Institute is actually doing research on this right now with their animals doing combined exposures. Because, of course, we are all living in a world of combined exposures. Well, hopefully, we're going to start talking about it. That's what I hope that everyone in this room will start talking about it. If you want, when you're, when you're learning about, when you're sharing this issue, and you in invariably will have someone say, there is no science on that. Go, and they don't, want to they don't want to go to any site except something that comes from the government, is what I found, uh, is go to the National Toxicology Program at NIEHS, the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, and go to their page on radiofrequency radiation studies, where they talk about the findings from their research. This is the page, National Toxicology Program, Cell Phone Radiofrequency Radiation. And if you sign up at Environmental Health Trust, I'll be sure to send you this as well. I'm going to send you the link to that. On that page, oh, oh what I should say is the NTP did this study. It was $30 million. The FDA then issued a statement that they disagreed with the findings. This was a study that they asked for. The FDA asked for this study over 20 years ago. And this is a statement by Jeffrey Shuren saying, we disagree with the conclusions. But I want to play you Dr. Ronald Melnick. He helped design the study at the National Institutes of Health. He's a 28-year scientist um, at NIH. And he's retired. So he is presenting on this issue worldwide. What does the public need to know? There have been okay. multiple studies have found increases in cancer associated with exposure to radiofrequency radiation. This is animals and humans. Because of the widespread use of cell phones, even a small increase in cancer risk would have a serious public health impact. I th strongly feel precautionary principles should be promoted by health and regulatory agencies, especially for children and pregnant women. The, the, the agencies in the U.S. say, if you are concerned, that puts the burden on the individual it doesn't say, we are concerned. It should be very straightforward. Precautionary principles should be promoted. Because as mentioned earlier, risk can be greater for children than adults due to the increased penetration of the radiation within brains of children. And the developing nervous system is more susceptible to tissue damaging agents. So finally, uh, what is the lesson that should be learned? When dealing with assumptions, uh, I think we've shown that assumptions, in this case, can be wrong. So that we should no longer assume that any current or future wireless technology, including 5G, is safe without adequate testing. Thank you. And I'm so thankful that um, Dr. Melnick is one of our scientific advisors now. We do several. Uh, webinars with him. They are all online. Please go online and watch the latest one where we talk to him about the action by the FCC saying that radio frequency radiation limits, that are wireless limits, are safe. 
Um, and I'm thankful for his courage and for the courage of all the scientists who are speaking about this all the time, um, trying to educate our policymakers. Now on that page I talked about, there's a section called FAQs. When you go to that page at NIH on cell phone radiation, click on the FAQs and you'll see a long list of questions and in there is the following question. Have you changed your cell phone use or what you recommend to your family? These are questions that were asked to NIH scientists of the NTP. And it states, NTP scientists have become more aware of their usage and follow FDA's tips for reducing exposure to cell phone radiofrequency radiation. And those tips are reduce the amount of time spent using your cell phone and use the speaker mode or headset to place more distance between your head and the cell phone. This is the first time a federal agency has stated that their scientists are reducing exposure. And I am so thankful that they updated their page to have this information. A few years ago, the CDC said that we recommend cautions like other countries did, and almost within, within weeks, it was removed off the website after um, industry-connected scientists contacted them, actually, on this. Cancer is only the tip of the iceberg, as I've talked about. The published research shows DNA damage. The NIH study found DNA damage in both mice and rat groups after only 14 weeks. Memory and brain damage, sperm damage, synergistic effects, headaches, oxidative stress, impacts to bees and insects, and trees. And I know Dr. Davis is gonna talk more about environmental, the science. Yet we're seeing commercials. This was the full page ad in the, the, the New York Times that Verizon 5G will help doctors see cancer like never before. 